Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Dentistified. I hope you all are doing good. So today's video is basically in continuation to my previous video which was part 2 of finish lines where we discussed about the various types of finish lines based on location that is supragingival, equigingival and subgingival finish lines. So today we'll be talking about the different types of finish lines based on the finish line design or configuration. Okay, so with that, I hope the expectations are rightly set for today's video. Let's just quickly go ahead and begin with the video. So there are different types of finish lines based on the location of finish line and depending upon the finish line design configuration. So the different types of finish lines based on the location of finish line are supragingival, equigingival and subgingival which we have discussed in our previous video okay and the different types of finish lines based on design are knife edged chamfer shoulder and shoulder with the bevel which we are going to discuss in today's video so before starting with the types of finish lines first we need to understand a simple concept okay so metals are capable of strength even in thin sections, whereas ceramics need some bulk in order to gain sufficient strength. Why? Because they are brittle. This means that in clinical situations where minimal tooth reduction is possible or minimal tooth reduction is needed, we prefer to choose conservative finish lines, for example, chamfer. And we provide metal margins in such clinical scenarios, okay? Because metals are capable of providing sufficient strength even in thin sections. Whereas in clinical situations where sufficient tooth reduction can be done, we choose the finish line which is not conservative. That is shoulder finish line. And since ceramics can gain strength in bulk, we can provide ceramic margins in such cases. So if you understand this simple concept, it will be very easy for you to grasp that which type of finish line is to be used for which type of restoration. So now let's start with the knife edged finish line. So knife edged finish line is very thin finish line and it is highly conservative. Very little tooth reduction is required as we can see here in this picture. And now let's talk about the indications for knife edged finish line. So knife edged finish line may be used in those clinical situations where minimal tooth reduction is possible. For example, for metal restorations in very young or in adolescent patients, it can also be used on the lingual surface of mandibular posterior teeth where minimal tooth reduction is possible and even in tilted teeth. Another indication is teeth having very convex axial surfaces. All these clinical situations require very minimal tooth reduction therefore we go for knife edged finish lines. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of knife edged finish line. So the major shortcoming of knife edged finish line is that knife edged finish line with the PFM restoration, it tends to underprepare the axial walls, which further leads to the crown being bulky and unesthetic. This means that since very less tooth reduction is done for creating a knife edged finish line, the labs they generally they tend to fabricate the crowns which are bulky and over contoured. Why? Because of the under prepared axial walls. Okay. So in an attempt to create sufficient space for both porcelain and metal, the preparation, the tooth preparation often becomes over tapered which further leads to an unretentive final restoration. That means there is loss of retention. So it is very difficult to fabricate the wax pattern and uh, cast with the knife edge finish lines and it is susceptible to distortion. Why? Because this type of margin design does not provide enough thickness. Okay. So another disadvantage of knife edge finish line is that being an indistinct finish line it is really difficult to reproduce it in the impression and it is also difficult to locate on the cast. And another disadvantage is that such restoration margin lacks strength. 
So now which burr is used to create a knife-ish finish line? It is a pointed end tapered fissure burr or we can say long needle diamond burr. Now let's talk about the chamfer finish line. So it is a well-defined and distinct finish line. Chamfer provides adequate space at the cervical uh, region so that the contour of the crown can be made within the contour of the natural tooth okay, and without over contouring of the final restoration. Chamfer is generally it is more conservative than the shoulder finish line and it is less conservative as compared to knife edge finish line. Why? Because it requires more tooth reduction as compared to knife edge finish line and it requires less of tooth reduction as compared to shoulder finish line. Now since the restoration margin obtained with the chamfer finish line is thick, it exhibits adequate bulk and it is also easy to control. So what are the indications for chamfer finish line? Just like knife edge finish line, the chamfer finish line is indicated for the areas which are to be covered by metal only. So it is mainly used for complete metal crown or it can also be used for the lingual metal margin of a PFM crown. So which burr is used to create a chamfer finish line? It is the round and tapered diamond burr. The tip of the burr produces the chamfer whereas the sides of the burr they give the required taper to the axial surfaces as we can see here in this picture. So next is heavy chamfer finish line. So if the chamfer finish line is to be used for a porcelain margin, then the finish line should be deep enough in order to ensure bulk of marginal porcelain to resist the fracture of porcelain. Okay, And which burr is used to create a heavy chamfer? It is the round and tapered diamond burr, but it is of greater diameter than that which was used to create the chamfer. So our next finish line is the shoulder finish line. It is a right angled finish line and a shoulder width of 1 mm to 1.5 mm at a 90 degrees to 100 degrees angle to the root surface is ideal. Okay, And the shoulder it requires more preparation, more of the tooth preparation therefore it is not conservative but it provides for the bulk of restorative material. The internal line angles should be rounded. Why? In order to reduce the stress concentration in that area. Because the sharp internal line angles, they can produce stresses in all ceramic crowns. Okay, And shoulder finish line produces a wide ledge which provides resistance to the occlusal forces and it minimizes the stresses. So what are the indications for shoulder finish line? It is generally indicated for full ceramic crowns and it is also given in the facial ceramic margins of the metal ceramic crowns or we can say facial margins of the PFM crowns. And which burr is used to create shoulder finish line? It is the flat and tapered diamond burr. So the tip of the burr is used to produce um, the shoulder finish line while the sides they provide taper to the axial walls. Okay. So there is another burr called end cutting diamond burr which has a cutting tip and non cutting sides. Okay. And this burr is used to smoothen the finish line by removing any unsupported or fragile uh, lip of enamel and hence it prevents the lipping of tooth structure. So this burr is basically used to finish or to smoothen the finish line. So next is shoulder with the bevel. It is a shoulder finish line with a bevel on the external edge of the unprepared tooth structure as we can see here in this diagram and this finish line the shoulder with the bevel it protects the edge of the finish line by preventing chipping it is said to reduce the marginal discrepancy of the gold restoration as it can be burnished and this finish line provides bulk of restorative material and it also provides circumferential rigidity 
but this finish line is not conservative and the shoulder with the bevel is sometimes indicated to hide the supragingival facial metal margin of a PFM crown. So to summarize, I will just give you a brief overview. So if we compare the finish lines, knife edged, chamfer and shoulder finish line, the knife edged finish line requires least tooth reduction. Whereas shoulder finish line requires maximum tooth reduction. Now because knife edged finish line requires least tooth reduction, therefore it is most conservative. Whereas shoulder which requires maximum tooth reduction is least conservative. Now the chamfer finish line, it needs more tooth reduction as compared to knife edge finish line and less tooth reduction as compared to shoulder finish line. Therefore chamfer is more conservative as compared to shoulder finish line. So the knife edge finish line is indistinct whereas chamfer and shoulder both are distinct finish lines and they provide adequate bulk to the restorative material. So now as we have already discussed in the beginning of today's lecture that metal can gain strength even in thin sections whereas ceramics being brittle they require bulk in order to gain sufficient strength. Okay, So knife edge finish line and chamfer finish line which require least amount of tooth reduction they can be used for metal margins. Whereas shoulder finish line which requires sufficient tooth reduction, it can be used for ceramic margins. So if we talk about the indications, knife edge finish line is indicated for all metal restorations for very young patients as I've already told you before where minimal tooth reduction is required okay and it can also be used on the lingual surface of mandibular tilted posterior teeth and it is also used in teeth with highly convex axial surfaces okay and chamfer finish line is basically indicated for all metal restorations and also for the lingual metal gens of a pfm crown whereas shoulder is indicated basically for uh, full ceramic crowns and it is also given in the facial ceramic margins of a PFM crown. So now which bar is used to create knife edge finish line? It is the pointed end tapered diamond or we can say long needle tapered diamond bar okay and round end tapered diamond is used to create chamfer and shoulder is prepared with flat and taper diamond bow. So I hope that today's video gave you a clear idea about the various types of finish lines based on their configuration and their indications. So to conclude, I would just say that proper diagnosis and treatment planning along with the skilled execution of the tooth preparation principles with the correct finish line contour is required to achieve adequate marginal integrity of the restoration and to achieve the health of the periodontal tissues okay which further ensures the longevity of uh, the dental restoration along with satisfying the aesthetic demands of the patient do like this video if you found it helpful and if you want me to make more such videos then consider subscribing to this channel Press the notification bell which is next to the subscribe button so that you will get notified whenever I post a new video. And don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues. You can also drop your suggestions about the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And I'll see you very soon in my next video. Till then, take care.